the second collection today, that uh, all of the money will stay here for our youth ministry program. So uh, just so you know that, it kind of supplements all the programs that our young people get to do. And sometimes it gets expensive for families to do that. So if you can help on the second collection, please do so. It's for our own youth ministry program here. So also NCYC is coming up, a Catholic Youth Conference, a national thing here in Indy that a lot of our young people like to go to. So you can only imagine what all that costs. So if you can help, please do. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is where we are now. The vineyard of the Lord is everywhere we go. The vineyard of the Lord needs workers. Needs workers to preach the gospel. Needs workers to proclaim God's love and God's mercy. And so as we gather here today, we hear, especially in the first reading in the gospel about the vineyard, and how we are to treat one another in the vineyard, and how we are to take care of the land that we have, the creation of God's world, how we are supposed to do what we can to be caretakers, not only of the, of the earth, but of the people who inhabit the earth. And so we are called to look out for one another, and uh, that's all people, but also, as it says in Scripture, we are to take care of the household of faith. We have to take care of ourselves, not in a selfish way, but in a way that nourishes us so that we can proclaim the good news, that we can be the face of Christ to those people that we encounter each and every day, so we can bring mercy to those who are hurting. We can bring uh, companionship to those who are lonely. We can bring food and clothing to people that need it. And the list is endless, as you know. And St. Paul gives us an idea how we are to live in the vineyard. You know, there's a lot that we can worry about. And, and um, some studies say that this generation or a certain generation is very anxious, very anxious and worried about things. And I know we've been through a lot of things in our world. And yes, there, are, there is a lot we can be anxious about. But where do we place our trust? Do we place our trust just in ourselves? Or do we place our, our trust in that of God? And Jesus, uh, excuse me, St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Philippians, you know, let's have no anxiety, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. We must persevere in faith. And yes, uh, bad things happen, and, and we can't control everything. But what we can control is our relationship with God. That's the foundation, the cornerstone of our life. That's where we find uh, peace that a world that this world cannot give to us. And we are to make our requests known to God so that the grace of God will give us a deeper understanding of God's love and mercy for us. And we are to be people of uh, truth, he says, and we are supposed to be honorable, we are supposed to work for justice, have a pure mind and heart, enjoy what is lovely and good, and be gracious to people. So St. Paul has some practical advice on how we can live in the vineyard. In the Gospel today, one of the parables of Jesus, this is a kind of an unusual parable. Scripture scholars tell us, you know, in, in the stories that Jesus tells us, they're, they're not normally about himself. But most scripture scholars, not all, agree, uh, agree that this parable in a very particular way is Jesus talking about himself. About himself. He is the one who will be killed on the altar of the cross. And so we hear about the vineyard and we hear about the landowner. We hear about God's earth, right? And people are taking care of it and people are working hard, but then greed and jealousy come into it. Into, our, into their lives and into our lives, and they get, become very greedy and want more. And so it says that the landowner sends all of these people into the, vine, into, into the vineyard, uh, excuse me, into, yes, into the vineyard to uh, collect, if you want to say rent, if you will, for the land. But it has nothing to do about rent. It has to do about the kingdom of God. 
And so people are sent out into the world, and the world sometimes rejects God and rejects God's word. And we are called to be instruments of peace. But Jesus kind of sets the stage here for his passion, his death, and his resurrection. And so Jesus is that son who is sent at the very end, and they kill him. And the people who kill him say, now he's the heir, we can get what we want. And there is no mercy given to the Son. And so Jesus is preparing through this parable his disciples, his apostles, and and his disciples to get ready. Get ready for the passion, death, and resurrection of himself. He's talking about his going to the cross, walking to the cross for the salvation of the world so that sin can be forgiven, so that the gates of heaven can be opened, so that justice can really happen in this world and if not in this world, in the world to come. And so Jesus ultimately surrenders himself. This is a parable about Jesus surrendering himself because he is the cornerstone. Jesus says, have you never heard that the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Jesus is that cornerstone. He is that one who brings peace into the world through his passion, death, and resurrection. For Jesus is complete surrender to the Father. And I hope that we too can surrender to God's love and mercy in our own lives.